Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bharatiya, and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. Today, we have with us, once again, Gregory Kurtzer, CEO of CIQ and Open ELA board member. Greg, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Swap. It's great to see you. Let's just quickly remind our viewers, what is Open ELA all about? Open ELA is a nonprofit trade association. Uh, it, its goal is to keep the, the, the source code for enterprise Linux developers to be a central hub for collaboration and, and support. Uh, the organization was originally founded by CIQ, Oracle, and SUSE, and it's now available for anybody to join. Uh, our mission is basically to provide a secure and transparent and reliable source for all enterprise Linux usage uh, to make sure that it's globally available to everybody and buildable for us all to create a foundation and build upon. If you look back at this year, according to you or the whole Open ELA organization, what would you consider some of your most important or major achievements this year? Well, first off, it, I think it should be pointed out, bringing together three major Linux organizations and us all working together and collaborating with a common vision, that was not an easy task. Uh, and it was uh, fantastic just to be able to bring everybody together. What I've learned from each one of these organizations is that we're, we're all solving the same sort of problems. We're all working together in a way that is super valuable for each other as well as for the community at large. So uh, it, it's been a great experience, great you know, to, to pull all these organizations together. With that being said, uh, we've also done some other things. Uh, Oracle has led the development of a uh, furthering some of the long-term support of a end-of-life kernel that many of us are using and many of us are leveraging. Uh, we've also uh, open-sourced documentation that uh, Oracle has built a huge amount of um, and put a huge amount of effort into that. And that documentation has now been released and is now being added upon from the community. Uh, We've, we've named Arthur Tide as the chair of the organization for the, the board chair uh, and, and released other projects to the open source community as well. Things like Mothership, which does our automation and allows us to, to automate the process and pipelines for making all the source code uh, available and testing, validating, and uh, uh, making sure branding is, uh, is all aligned, et cetera. Thank you. Now, if you look at just the mission of Open ELA, you know, the easy, open, democratic, you know, availability of enterprise Linux source. And if you look at how the market has evolved, if you look at the early days, even when the FSF or, you know, the whole open source concept came up, we used to, you know, the, the mode of writing and distributing software was different than it is now. Everything is service, everything is cloud-based, uh, everything is running in the cloud. So how important do you feel is or relevant or significant is the is the access to enterprise link sources today versus when you folks you know came up with the idea of open ela i would say that the access to the sources is definitely important but even a bigger uh, amount of importance is really around the standardization uh, to make sure that we are all based on the same sort of things. I mean, the LSB has been around for, uh, it's been over two decades now. And the whole point of the LSB was to drive standards in the community, which makes lives better for everybody using, you know, Linux, everybody using applications on top of Linux, uh, ISVs and IHVs that continue to add value as well. Uh, if we don't have that level of compatibility, if we don't have that level of standards and, and driving towards that, uh, you know, we end up with a whole bunch of things that aren't necessarily compatible with each other. So it's super important to make sure that we have a common base, a common foundation that we can continue to leverage and build a community around such that this is an open uh, standards. When we look at open, when we look at the whole mission, of course, there are a lot of neutral foundations. Of course, Apache is there, you know, uh, Linux Foundation is there, a ton of open infra is there. Do you feel that putting source code or building kind of governance with some of these foundation is a better approach to ensure that, of course, things will not change as stakeholders may change their mind over a period of time? Or you feel that building right foundation, and I'm not talking about the foundation as an organization, but the building right principles, foundations for any project, OpenAlia is a good example, is 
also a right approach to, is to ensure sustainability of the project. What I'm trying to understand is that sometimes we always say, you know, if the source code is owned by one player, which can be a vendor, and that's what happened with, whether it's we look at HashiCorp, whether it's Redis, versus when we look at a neutral foundation, but then there the problem is also that foundations, they also depend heavily on the support contribution from uh, you know, enterprise player, you know, if foundations don't have fund, they will not be able to fund their own projects. So what do you think is the right approach, which also kind of led to the whole governance of open ELA as well? This is why we decided that we didn't want to do this ourselves as, as CIQ. Uh, this is probably, and I don't mean to put words in their mouths, but probably the same sort of ideas that Oracle and, and SUSE had as well, which is single vendor products, is, which which has a single company behind an open source project. And that single company generally owns and controls every aspect of that open source project. So even though it's open source, it is governed and controlled by a single entity. And these single entities, in, in most cases, are for-profit entities. The, the, the way around this and the way to create something that is truly sustainable and, and, uh, and, and clear in terms of its direction and its motivation is to create a, a organization around that which is neutral. And then to make sure that you also have several other organizations, uh, best case scenario is that our comp competing organizations that are all part of this, this organization, this, this neutral organization. And that's exactly what we, what we set out to do with Open ELA. And this is why CIQ, as well as Oracle and SUSE, have been so excited about the creation of Open ELA. Today, Open ELA is guaranteeing that the source code for enterprise Linux, the foundation that we all use, is, is available. Uh, tomorrow, maybe it becomes a little bit more uh, uh, a little bit more as a stakeholding organization to what does enterprise Linux look like as a future? And what are we going to do as a community to make sure that this foundation that we all are leveraging is standards compliant, is, is fair and neutral? So every organization that wants to have a say can come along and have a say and be part of this. And that's really where the organization is, is today. We've created the roots, we've created this, this base and now we're inviting other organizations who wish to be a part of this, whether they are uh, creating a Linux distribution themselves and want a standard that they can base upon, or whether that they are leveraging uh, that, that enterprise Linux distribution to become a foundation for their applications, for their services, and for other things. Open ELA can now provide that to them. And this all now translates to a, a more stable foundation, uh, a more stable base to all of the users in the community who need to leverage this. What plans do you have for 2025? How are you planning to expand and grow the organization? Uh, as we start to move towards the future, really we want to continue advancing automation. We want to in and continue bringing in other organizations and other members into Open ELA and really just build up more um, uh, more voices. We want more people in the room, more people who understand exactly what it is we need to build and have a stake in this. They, they have an opinion on how they want this to be uh, built and they have an opinion on what this should look like because they're a stakeholder in this. And so we do want to advance automation. We want to speed up uh, the releases. Uh, we want to create more standards around enterprise Linux. And again, increase the size of the community, bring in additional organizations, collaborators, uh, partners, and members. And as you are, you know, as I said, you also want to expand a membership, you know, involve more organizations. Can you talk about from Open ELA's perspective, what kind of organizations are ideal for you? And from, you know, companies' perspective, Open ELA is the right place for them. Really, in terms of the companies and the organizations and the people, uh, who, who would be most interested to, to join Open ELA? It really is the entire gamut. It is uh, end users. It is organizations that are leveraging this, uh, vendors that that leverage this base. Whether they're using SUSE, Oracle, Rocky, CIQ, whether they're using any of those or not, having that base, having that standard, is incredibly valuable to to them. Again consumers, users of this, vendors, as well as distribution vendors and distribution uh, providers. 
So really it's, it's everyone in the community that has a stake and has a, has a consideration and a, and a concern on the future of enterprise Linux is welcome to join. We'd love to have you. We'd love to uh, hear what you have to say, hear your perspectives and learn how can we be doing this better and hopefully have you join up and, and be helpful to, to everything that we're doing. Greg, thank you so much for joining me today. And of course, to talk about the whole evolution of OpenELA. And I look forward to talk to you folks again next year and see you know, what uh, the market holds for OpenELA and what OpenELA holds for the whole ecosystem. Thanks for your great insights today. As always, thank you, Swap, and have a great beginning of 2025.